uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting held this May 19th, 2021 at uh, 6.02 p.m. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate and alternate means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on the Frontier Community Access Television, better known as FCAT, and for remote meeting connections, uh, the dial-in number is 312-626-6799. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Uh, all this information is uh, available on uh, Deer Town of Deerfield's website. And we welcome everybody here. So we'll call this meeting to order. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we have a very busy schedule for hearings this evening. Uh, the first one is at uh, six o'clock. Do you want me to read that, Casey, or will somebody read yes, it? Yes, please. Okay. Unless you want me to read it, I'll read it if you want. Okay. Ha ah, he gave in so easily. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so. I'm married to a redhead, remember? <laughs> <laughs> the lighting in this place is not good. <laughs> so Deerfield Select Board and Board of Health notice of hearing. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing pursuant to General Laws Chapter 41, Section 108A on May 19th, 2021 at 6 p.m. The select board proposes to amend the Town of Deerfield General Bylaws, Chapter 35, Section 3525, titled Holidays, by adding Juneteenth Independence Day to the list of holidays and renaming Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. A full text of the article may be viewed in the foyer or on the town's website, and the link is identified in the notice. And then Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, chapter 30A, section 20. Join the Zoom meeting and it, the link follows. And then the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Meeting passcode is 570-012. The dial-in number is 1-929-205-6099 or 1-301-715-8592 with a toll-free number of 877-853-5257. Hey, do I hear any discussion on this? Carolyn? No, I, I'm, I'm all set with this. I mean, I think it does need to be reevaluated. Would you like me to explain it very quickly based on my conversation with personnel board? Yes, please. Yeah. Personnel board. So as you know, the governor created Juneteenth Independence Day in recognition of the widely celebrated Juneteenth um, day in other areas. So he created the holiday. The there was some consideration of whether it should be added to the town's list of paid holidays because this starts with the personnel board. So I took it to the personnel board. I was advised by council that we needed to consider it. Um, and so their comment was, or their recommendation was that it, it be added to the list of paid holidays in recognition of the importance of the holiday itself. And also that we do everything in our power to recognize the social justice ramifications of the holiday. And additionally, at that same meeting, they, they took a vote to rename Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, which 
I was told, and I don't have the list of holidays from um, other organizations such as the schools, I was told that that's, that change has been evolving over a period of time. So you're seeing it after the personnel board has made this recommendation and would like you to consider it because of the nature of the change to the bylaws, it requires a hearing. I'll just, uh, this Trevor, I, I would speak um, in full support of, of both of these measures to um, by adding uh, Juneteenth, Ind Juneteenth Independence Day. Um, uh, it, it's, it's long past time that we celebrate that. And I'm, I'm glad the governor has signed that and, and um, moved that forward. It is a day to celebrate um, the abolishment of slavery and free people. And then um, I do think it's, it's um, also time, you know, especially here in Deerfield to, to recognize um, indigenous people and um, all that they have suffered and, and all they've added to our, um, to the fabric of America over the years. Uh, they were here long before Columbus came here. And um, I think it's time that we, I, 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 I'm proud to change it from Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day and celebrate all that um, the indigenous people of, of Deerfield and, and around the country have um, given to America. I, I, I agree too. Okay, um, do we have any public comment? There are no hands up. No hands up, okay. Do uh, you want us to take a vote on this, Casey? To close? Yeah, I think we'll close the hearing and then, yeah. <laughs> I speak too much, then I speak too little. <laughs> um, so first you would wanna close the, the, the hearing. hearing to public comment and then deliberate amongst yourselves and then take a vote on whether to um, confirm this go to the town meeting warrant for consideration by the elected bo elected body. So make a motion. Body. To close this hearing, I'll second that, Carolyn. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Nope. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. So uh, the hearing is now closed. Um, do I hear a motion of uh, going forward and placing this on the warrant? I'd make that motion. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. All right. Okay. Uh, our next hearing is at uh, 6.15. So I don't know if we wanna hit one of the two of the discussion items first. Oh. We could do that. Huh? You could yeah. do that. The um... The first discussion item is Frontier Regional Schools Class of 2021 Appreciation Parade Request. That was sent to me by Detective Sergeant Sokolowski. It's in your packet. It, I'm scrolling, hold on. Just thought I'd read it to you. Okay. Class of 2021 is requested an appreciation parade like we did last year. Um, Adam has worked with, with Sue Antonellis, who's going to help with the lineup. Detective Sergeant Sokolowski will be working to organize the other aspects of the parade with the four towns as he did last year. The parade route goes from the DPW to Frontier Regional School. It will take place at 5 p.m. on Thursday, June 3rd, 2021. And he just wishes the board to indicate whether they're supportive of this and make sure that we're aware this will impact the center of town. Um, I, I, I'm 100% in support of this. It's, yes. Uh, they're trying to be safe. They're trying to be safe, and they're trying to have celebration. So I think it's wonderful. It was great. It was a great event last year. Oh. And just I think the families loved it. The kids loved it. Um, it was just fun to watch them all go by, and very excited. So I'm, I'm so in favor of this again. Yeah, I as well. Um, it was like the town really enjoyed it. 
and actually have probably more participation than the actual graduation with the number of people that came out to see it. So, yes. so yeah, that's great. So, uh, so would the board take a vote to support it, please? I, I will make that motion to support the um, uh, Frontier Class of 2021 Appreciation Parade request. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried, 300. Very good, thank you. Of course, it's sentimental because it's 50 years ago this month or June that I graduated from Frontier. Is that right? Yeah. Just yesterday. Just yesterday. Yeah, I was senior class president and all that good stuff. Really? Yeah. Very nice. Very so, nice. My first foothold into politics. <laughs> <laughs> Little did you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got a couple more minutes. Is there something yeah, we can? So the next item in the, actually, maybe we could skip to the Frontier Regional School, school the FRS School Committee request for amendment to the FY 2021 budget. Now that is the request to adjust the FY 21 budget and utilize 2021 funding to reallocate $158,730 of excess and deficiency funds for the purposes of addressing maintenance and equipment replacement that include the track at $39,980. And that is the Berkshire Design Group architect contract, which is, I think, track budget overage. Mm -hmm. The second item is the track at Mountain View Landscaping Contract. It's also track budget overage, and that's $8,750. Um, the pole vault and high jump landing equipment of $25,000 as part of the track project. A nine or 14 passenger van to replace the existing seven passenger van at $50,000. Gymnasium and auditorium duct cleaning and purchase new stage curtains at $35,000 for a total of $158,730. If you recall at the last finance committee meeting last week, Trevor indicated he, we might see something like this. This is the formal request. The school committee has voted it and they wish the town to approve this reallocation of 2021 funds. This would allow us, if the board approves it, this would allow us to remove the warrant article for the gymnasium and duct cleaning the gymnasium duct cleaning and stage curtains for consideration. Um, I'm in uh, full favor of this. I, I just think it's a it's, um, great way to use the E&D. You know, with the doing of the track over a lot of the equipment, like the pole, you know, the pole vaulting pad and all that kind of stuff is really old and, and, and really in bad shape. So while the track gets redone, this will have new equipment when it, when it opens up. I think it's a great way to do all of that. There is a, you know, one of their passenger vans is in really bad shape and it should come off the road. So it's another good way to do that. It gets the gymnasium, you know, duct cleaning off and the other stuff off our warrant. And, um, and it does take care of some of the, you know, the architect landscape stuff that, you know, we can pay for and we don't have to go to the residents for. So I think it's a great move. And, and, I, and I thank the Frontier School Committee and Darius for putting it forward. Um, I also agree. I think it um, is. Um, I appreciate them trying to figure out different ways to pay for it. Now, do we have to have a positive vote from the other towns before it actually comes off our warrant? Not to take it off of our warrant, but the committee's proposed amendment that you have to take a vote to approve shall be effective if it is approved by two thirds of the local appropriating authorities. Okay. And that's similar to how the budget works, correct, Trevor? Yes. Yep. That's what I remembered. So okay. I'd make a motion to approve this use of E&D funds. From FY21 in the amount of $158,730. I, like Casey said, yeah. like Casey said, <laughs> yes. Friendly amendment, yes, I'll take that, thank you. 
Uh, Carolyn, Carol did you second? Carolyn's, she's muted, so, yep. I'll second it. <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor? Oh, I Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Yes. Carolyn Ness, yes. Dave Wolfram, yes. Trevor McDaniel, yes. Okay. Great. So it's six eighteen. Yes. The next item is the Board of Health Body Art Regulations hearing. Give me a sec. And I will read it if you like. Yes. A public hearing will be held by the Deerfield Board of Health at the municipal offices. 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. on May 19th, 2021 at 615 p.m. to consider adopting body art regulations. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, chapter 30A, section 20, the Zoom meeting information is available through the link indicated on the hearing notice. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570-012. Dial-in numbers are 1-929-205-6099 or 1-301-715-8592 or toll-free at 877-853-5257. The proposed regulations may include, but are not limited to the purpose of the regulations, definitions of terms, exemptions, restrictions, operational requirements, standards of practice, injury and complaints, applications for establishment and practitioner permits, grounds for suspension, denial, revocation, refusal for renewal, and suspension of permits, hearing procedures, and unauthorized practice. The regulations are available for inspection in the foyer of the municipal offices during business hours or may be viewed at www.deerfieldma.us slash forward slash home forward slash events forward slash 63051. That's why I didn't read it before, it's hard. <laughs> but all of this is posted on the website on the calendar page for this hearing. Um what this is, this has been kicking around for over a year. Um, two years. Has it been two years? Oh my God. Yes. It's been a long time. Yeah. It was a year before COVID. Yeah. Right. It was a year before COVID. All right. I'm losing track of time. I'm going crazy. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, we are now, of course, more opening up. And um, so we need to take care of this because we have no regulations. Uh, and no ability to issue a permit. We basically cut and paste from Northampton of all the statewide body art regulations. Northampton's was one of the best. They had a whole committee of um, public health people plus um, you know, owners of body art establishments. And they worked on this for over two or three years and came up with this and, and it has been successful in enforcement and the ability to enforce good reg reg regulations as well as safety measures in the town of Northampton. So um, I would recommend as um, the Board of Health adopt these standards um, and, and um, operation, you know, permitting and, um, uh, and, and fines and, and all the um, things that we've referenced in our public hearing. Do you have any comment, Trevor? No, no, I've, uh, I've gone through this a couple of times and I, I feel uh, pretty good. I mean, they're, they're very extensive and uh, safety is, is um, you know, the first concern here. I, I feel pretty good with that, with the um, regulations. Okay, do you have any comment from public? Nobody's hands up. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to close the hearing. I would make the motion to close the hearing on the bar body art regulations. I'll second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Okay. Any further discussion? 
Hearing Aye. none. All those in favor. Caroline. Aye. Aye. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Um, I make a motion to approve the body art regulations as presented tonight. I'll second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Uh, any further discussion? Nope. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you. Did, Carolyn, did you vote? No. Oh, I, I voted the first one. Oh, that was oh. for closing. This is for the actual. Oh, no, I, oh, well, the, all right, I'll vote for you. over each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. With Zoom, it's hard to tell who goes first. I'm just, ladies first, I think, is what's going to happen here. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just keep I stepping all over you. I could make a suggestion. <laughs> yes. I could make a suggestion that I've seen work with some of the other committees. Yeah. Um, David, you could just give yourself a list, and in each vote, you could say, you could call out the other two members' names. Okay. If uh, you wanted to do it that way. Do roll calls? Yeah, yeah. for roll calls. Um, so with the number of hearings, we could go to 10 o'clock instead of 9.30 tonight. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Trevor, it's just that we switched. We switched. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's always Trevor and Dave and then me. Now, no. it's, you know, it's going to uh, be whatever. So <laughs> we'll figure it out. We, no. don't, we don't need to add an extra step. OK. OK. Uh, well, we've got uh, seven minutes before the next hearing. Um, you want me to move to one of the discussion items or? Okay. You yes. want to go to outdoor sports, no masks? Um, well, we could go to Slickman's comments real quick and then we could go down to the Board of Health stuff and okay. be done. Um, my, uh, the only thing I wanted to bring up under Slickman's comments is um, uh, May 30th is the Hatfield Parade. And Dave, you are now chair of the Selectman's Board of Selectmen and our board, Select like board. board. Yes, sorry, Select Board. And um, so how are, we're supposed to drive, drive, be in this drive parade. So do you have a vehicle for us? I'm gonna drive my own, I think. We're just you gonna have to make a sign. All right, well, we can, can we join you then with a- More than welcome to. Okay, there so you go. Put balloons on it or something. Yes, no. some tin cans will tie in the back. Do we need to? What time do we need Just to? Just elected. <laughs> <laughs> what time do we have to be there, Casey? Do you remember? I don't. I will have to check and see you what said, the parade lineup is. You said when? May 30th? Yes. At 11 a.m., I think I have it in my calendar, but I, we'll probably I have to get there earlier, I'm yeah. sure. Uh, whatever. Could Casey, can you just check that? Oh. We're going to need to. Somebody has a Mini Cooper that's a convertible. Ah. <laughs> that's fine. We just we have to. All three of us have to. Show it only up. fits two people, David. <laughs> I'll burn out the clutch. Oh, but you know what you could do? I know somebody else who has a convertible. Um, that yeah, perhaps are. he wouldn't mind driving someone. Is that somebody involved with the Board of Health? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, you could ask him that. Yeah. We need to sort out something, guys. Yeah. Who knows how to drive a stick shift is the question because mine is a stick shift. <laughs> um, I, I mean, that's a no-brainer. Well, we should we should get together like on the you know that Saturday or something and, and you know plan on making our signs and get some balloons or something. I don't want to show up Sunday with nothing. So. Okay. That makes let's, sense. Let's do something. Yeah. The 29th. All right. We'll, we'll sort something out. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm, I, I guess we're not going to have time for Board of Health. Anything else? Other? Oh, I, uh, I could make a quick comment on the um, select board. Yes. For uh, just, just to let you know that uh, for, for all the people that, you know, this has been years in the works for the sewer project that um, notice of intent. Uh, or notice to proceed has has gone forward. Um, the project uh, will have a kickoff meeting, construction kickoff meeting uh, next Tuesday, and I think by the thirty first we will start um, 
pulling dirt off the site and getting um, getting going. Trailers will be showing up. So the work begins. Um, and I know that uh, we are working on a short short term borrowing with um, bar, um, uh, Barbara's been working on getting that kind of squared away and how much we'll go out for and how long that band is going to be. We'll pay off the first band um, and pick up another band for um, until I think May, next May, um, the end of next May. And then, um, you know, then our third one will come, come due. But um, I think she's kind of figured a way to structure that so that we'll um, get some good rates, we hope, or good bids on her be just under $10 million that we'll be um, doing a band for. So it's exciting to see it get started and get going on it. Casey, is this a good time to bring up the issue of permits or no? Mm. No, let me think while you guys, let me think about that. Okay. Actually, no, you could. So, so I had a conversation with, it is an item unanticipated but mm -hmm. we could move it around. We've moved to several other things around. So the request or the comment to me was, does the, the select board wanna waive the permit for this particular building permit application? I for think we've done that work? in the past. This is for the upgrades project phase one. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, waive the fee, but we'd still obviously give them a permit. Right, waive the fee, Correct. sorry. Yeah. And I make a motion we waive the fee. All I'll you're doing is paying one taxpayer. I mean, you're making taxpayers pay additional funding. Right. Doesn't even make sense. So I make no. that motion. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer. uh, Jennifer's got a comment on that. I just would like the motion to be for all permit fees for this space. It's not just building permit. Okay. Associated with the project, Jennifer? Yes, please. Perfect. Friendly amendment. I'll accept a, friendly amendment. Yeah, yeah, I make a motion to make sure we waive all permits. Um, there's no reason to charge our tax. All permit fees. fees. Yep. Perfect for this project. Um, I'll second that motion. Um, any further discussion? Okay, uh, I do have just to make sure that people understand we're waiving permit fees, but we are not waiving inspections. Correct. Or the application. It's just. Right. All There's just no fee, yeah. no yeah. fee. But, but just to make sure that people understand, you know, our inspectors will still be looking at every aspect of this project. Oh, yes. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing then, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. We got this down. Okay, we got this down now. <laughs> okay, motion carried. Sad. Sad. So it is now 6.30. We have a class two dealer license hearing. Dig that out here somewhere. Hold on. Do you I want me to read, read that? It. Oh, okay. Do you want to read it? You yeah, can read I'm, I'm it happy there. to do that. I'm happy okay. to do that. So, um, so the town of Deerfield notice of hearing class two used car dealer license. The Deerfield Select Board hereby given notice in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 140, section 59, that K Dog Auto Sales at 670 River Road, Deerfield, Mass, has a, uh, filed an application with the select board to run an internet sales only class two used de uh, vehicle dealer business. In compliance with the Massachusetts general laws, the select board will hold a public hearing at the municipal offices, uh, main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on May 19th. Uh, 2021 at 6 30 p.m. via Zoom. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. The full text proposed articles can be found on the town website. He's waving. You're waving? Um, I'm waving. That piece of that is actually a copy and paste from another notice. Oh. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Thank you. The passcode of 570-012 and the dial-in number of 929-205-6099 or 301-715-8592 and toll-free 
at 877-853-5257. Thank you. Oh, and we need to change that from Board of Selectmen to Select Board. Does it say that somewhere? Where is at it? the bottom it Oh does. yeah, geez, what is up with us here? I didn't see Sometimes that. we recreate the wheel. And, and I of, I'm sorry. Well, we don't always chairs. recreate the wheel. <laughs> she took a Carolyn as chair too, so. so it's an older note. There you go. It is an older note. Carolyn, you can go back to being chair. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah. not turning all responsibility. Right. I think this was there. this was done before uh, because this was done before the election. I think yeah. this what, what, why this all looks like this. So. Okay. So, um, so I declare this uh, hearing is now open. Uh, I'd like to hear from the petitioner. Uh, is that Kevin Borbo? Here, present. Hey, Kevin. Okay. Tell us a bit about your project. Well. Uh, due to the zoning constraints and that sort of thing. I kind of got the idea through the other businesses that are doing internet sales, um, Carvana, uh, and those type of places um, where the customers are not coming to you, you're going to them, um, which I think it's, it's a very doable option. Um, I have a lot of connections in the car community anyway. Um, so I, I don't foresee it being a problem. Meaning bringing cars to somewhere. Right, exactly. So, so somebody. Yep. So, uh, so the plan is that you would, um, you would not be housing any vehicles at your place. And for uh, sale, just, correct. Just, I'm, right, I'm, for sale. I'm going to have one vehicle, one oh. dealer plate. Yep. Um, and if it's going to be parked for any length of time, it will be parked out of view. Okay, so it's not like a car lot. You don't have a Correct. car lot there for sale. Exactly. No sign for sale. That kind of thing. Exactly. It's just um, so. Uh, this is basically setting a foundation for uh, a future project where I would actually be renting a, a commercial lot mm -hmm. down the road. It's just it's helping me establish it and and get it off the ground. But I think it's a doable option, being that there's a lot of options on the internet. Um, you got Craigslist and th those sort of things. I've sold cars on there before, mm -hmm. and it, it works very well. Kevin, I'm concerned about uh, repairs. Are you going to do any repairs to these vehicles? No, I use uh, I do a lot of stuff with Bex Auto over in Greenfield. So, alignments and, and engine work and things like that is all done over there so no repairs at your at your house no okay um <clears throat> so uh let's see so exactly couple, is 670 i've got a brain cramp it's down right, by moody's yeah right right where mcclellan farm kind of takes that sharp turn right yep okay. or river road takes a turn and yep but exactly. isn't that right, right on that corner? Yeah. Um, Kevin, you said you were going to, um, the, the cars were going to be um, out of sight. Where, where were you going to park them out of sight? I can park them down behind my house and it has no visibility from the road at all. Uh, we also have a barn there. I can put it inside the barn. It, it, so that's, that's plowed in the wintertime? I mean, that you have access to that in the wintertime? Yeah, yep. Yeah. We have tractors and all that stuff there. <laughs> we, we do a lot of ground maintenance there with, with farm vehicles. Uh, so, so I just have a, a, a few things. So, you know, when I first came across my desk to look at this, I have um, a lot of concerns about granting a, you know, a class two license in an RA district, right? That's the first yep. kind of thing I'm like, this, this makes me really nervous. Um, and what kind of precedent does it set? Um, and then I, you know, I, I reached out to our building inspector and zoning enforcement officer, and uh, he told me he was write, writing kind of an opinion on this. So I'll, I'll read that opinion into the record at the moment and then um, have a couple other questions. So uh, this is May 18th, 2021. To whom it may concern, I've been asked for a zoning opinion regarding an application for a class two auto dealer license being applied for 
uh, by uh, Kevin uh, Borbo of 670 River Road. I spoke to Mr. Borbo regarding this and his request to conduct internet sales only. Uh, I'm of the opinion that Mr. Borbo's proposed business does qualify as a home occupation as of right. Section 2241 of Chapter 179 Deerfield Zoning Bylaws, as long as he can and will continue to meet all of the required conditions stated under Section 2241. Mr. Borbo, during our verbal uh, discussion, has satisfied the seven conditions listed under the Section 2241, and I am attaching a copy of the condition listed. He has stated that he will not uh, that he will only have one car for sale at a time, and the car can or will be parked in an, in an accessory structure. He will not have any employees. He will not be serving clients at his home. The sales will be conducted on the internet, or he will be uh, bringing the vehicle to the customer. Uh, he has no intention of having a sign or exterior display. No disturbance or excessive traffic will be caused by parking one vehicle on his proper property. Um, it said anyone agreed by this opinion may appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and I think there was a list of those kind of conditions of 2241 and um, the occupation, I'll just list A, the occupation uh, or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or uh, within a building or structure accessory here there too, which has been in existence for at least five years, which it has. Uh, not more than 30% of the combined floor area of the residence and any qualified accessory structure shall be used in the home occupation, which I don't believe it would. No, um, no person, uh, not a member of the household shall be employed on the premises in the occupation, which you said is just Correct. yourself. Yep. Um, the home occupation shall not serve clients, customers, uh, pupils, salespersons, or like on the premises, which you said you'll be going to the places or it'll be online. Correct. Mm -hmm. have no customers there. Um, there shall be no sign, exterior display, no exterior storage of materials and or other exterior indication of a home of the home occupation other than variation of the residential characteristics um, of the premises. So you aren't changing anything or adding on no. a bay nope. or anything like that. Nope. Um, no disturbance as defined in section 3410 uh, shall be caused, nor shall the home occup occupation use or storage hazardous materials in quantities greater, greater than associated with a normal household. So you're not adding you know, nope. repair materials or oils or that kind of thing. No. Nope. Um, traffic generated shall not exceed volumes normally expected for a residential neighborhood. And if you're not having customers there, you're not going to see any of that. Right. So um, for the home occupation business, that tends to make sense that you could move forward and do that, you know, as of right. And really the question is for us, um, you know, do we also extend a class two used car dealer license for it um and i think the the only real hesitation i have is just again that precedent of setting a used car dealer license in a residential agricultural zone um so i think that i think i think the only thing i just want to i just wanted clarification from our council that we're not again setting a precedent. I mean, this is a little bit of a unique situation in that I think the last class two that I had sat on this board for was a business that was actually storing vehicles for sale in a commercial area and they had, I don't know, 12 lots. I forget how, how many it was, but, and then they had to have a bond and make sure that they had, um, that they had a place to repair the vehicles. And there was, there was a lot more involved because they were storing a lot of vehicles on site and we're actually working on them there. Um, mm -hmm. They weren't doing any kind of oil work and you know motor work, but just kind of refabrication. So I just wanted some clarification from our council. Um, you know, I, I guess just just to make sure that we were we were applying this this license um, correctly. So I think once I had that, I would feel a little bit more comfortable about it. But I, 
I mean, everything after speaking with the uh, building inspector, I felt a little bit, I had a better understanding of what you were trying to do and that it wasn't, you know, it didn't seem like it was setting the precedent that I thought we might be setting. So I think once I get a little bit more clarity on that, I'd feel a little bit better. With I'm, the, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not disrupting the neighborhood. I'm not right. altering anything. Uh, everything is done basically in front of the computer. Right. And via cell phone. Okay. So, I mean, it's, I, I, you know. I, guess, I had just two concerns. One was how, um, you know, doing one vehicle at a time. I don't know right. how we would monitor that. And, um, and again, this is a reference to a prior application we had. Um, I'm, I just remember we had to have a repair shop and I mean, so you had to have a bond and a repair Yeah, I, I already worked on that. You did? $25,000 bond. Okay, that's what I was going to, that was one of my other questions and not to yeah. interrupt yeah. Carolyn, but I, that was, you know, on the application, there was a couple of things that were missing, which were the bond. And I wasn't sure which came first, the license or the bond. So, um, and, and then the other thing was the sketch of the property and where you'd store them, I guess, was the only other item that was. Yeah, right. There, there was something about, you had to have, you had to have a, it was the lemon law thing. Remember, you had to have a repair shop or you had to have a relationship with a repair shop that was in full capability of, of the right. lemon law requirements. So I'm, I'm just would like to table this. I mean, until we clar are clarified with legal counsel, what, um, what, what we are supposed to require for that, um, you know, class two. Because remember yep. we had all that problems uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. remember that you guys? Yep. Yep. So um, I, I don't, uh, I know there was all kinds of stuff that we had to do and, and ask for, and, and I would just like that clarified from, um, you know, our legal counsel on that. And it looks sure. I've, yeah. I've, also, I've also had two previous uh, dealer licenses. Uh, one was the town of Greenfield and town of Montague. Okay. Um, so I'm very aware of what's required and what yep. needs to be okay. done. So, so you did submit the $25,000 bond? No, I have Viles Insurance in Deerfield uh, has gotten all that paperwork ready for me. I okay. hadn't actually paid for that yet, pending yeah. approval here. Okay. Oh, I. That's uh, that's what I was trying yeah, to figure. Yeah, well, I think we need to. Yeah, I think we have to have it before we can give you the license. Well, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, Just wanted to see what the what the uh, what the flavor of the meeting was. Yeah. Right. The physical the physical license, yes, you will have the bond in hand. Yeah. Before you issue the license. Gotcha. Okay. And okay. so you have a written. You have a written agreement with a repair shop for the, that qualifies for the Lemon Law. I don't have it written. I can get you a written. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure we have to have. Uh, Lisa will tell us we have to have a written um, uh, commitment from your repair shop that they, dating that they do my repair work. That, yeah. Right. That they meet yep. all the Lemon Law requirements. Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm just, I just remember yep. when we yeah. were doing this a couple of years ago, it was very complicated. I don't have um, a problem getting that. Right. Yeah. Uh, I agree with uh, Carolyn on the, the matter of maybe tabling it uh, as well as Trevor uh, until we can speak to council. My, you know, as a home business, you kind of qualify. Yeah. But as a class two dealer, our bylaws don't specify whether internet or not. Right. So I'm, That's I'm hesitant of granting a class two license and not knowing exactly how the internet comes into play. So I think we should, we have to talk to council about it. Basically what the internet does is it takes the place of actually having a physical car lot. Right. You can take the pictures of the vehicles, you can post them online. Yep. Uh, and it's basically mirroring that without having to have a physical car lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I understand that. It's just the fact that with a class two under our current bylaws, there's no separation between the internet and uh, actual class two. Well, I, uh, Kevin, what we would like to know, I mean, what we want to um, ask our council is, 
if we give, are we able to approve a internet one car kind of thing at a time under this dealership license? Okay. Yeah. I think that's what Dave is saying. I'm right. not sure if if we do the if we grant the class two license that we can actually limit it. Right. Because that because that issue. was a discussion a couple of years ago right. when we were trying to limit to 12 lot to 12 slots you could i don't think you we are able to limit it if we were issuing that license which was limited from the planning board and limited from the agreement that we had with the person so i just want to i'm i don't have enough information on this i mean i think we need to talk to our lawyer on this so that we can actually do it correctly yeah and do okay. you justice so you're doing the right thing Yep. you know yeah but um would like to hear some any other comments maybe any oh if yeah wanna, i'm did sorry anybody else want to i mean other than did anyone else in the board first and then public i do have a hand up from steve anderson okay you guys are, are are you guys are muted if you want to unmute Hi there, welcome. Hey, hi, can you hear us now? Yes, we yeah. can. Welcome. Okay. Um, hi. Too. Well, I live, uh, Steve and I, Steve Anderson and Ava Gibbs, we live at 617 River Road. So it sounds like there's two things that this hinges on, um, and that is the internet, the whole thing with the internet. And I have to say that um, we've read and we've asked other people to read the bylaws, and as Dave Wolfram said, this is not, it doesn't say that you're allowed to, um, that you could circumvent 2241 and 2242, um, unless you're gonna change Deerfield's bylaws. Because if we are now saying that um, a class two used car dealership is allowed on residential agricultural land, but it's okay if it's internet, but it's not written in our bylaws at all. And you could just, I mean, then I just want to say, speaking to the word precedent that someone mentioned, this opens up a huge precedent because, you know, anyone on any RA zoned place could do this. So we don't have, we don't write that. We are prohibiting it. And now are we going to allow it because of the internet? That's number one. So this is not within our bylaws. If, if, if the bylaws are gonna change, they have to change through going to town meeting, the way we change zoning bylaws here. You know, I don't think that we can just say, okay, um, you can have it because it's internet. That's number one. The number two concern is how is all this gonna be enforced? I, I'd like to know what the enforcement will be. Um, I don't. Um, I have questions about if they're only going to be one vehicle at a time, uh, can other vehicles be there? Will Mr. Borbeau possibly pass up a good deal on whatever, wherever he's getting his vehicles from and, you know, have more than one? Are we, are we supposed to watch, you know, uh, who's, how will this be enforced? When it's a regular car dealership, on a regular commercial lot and you have set conditions, it's pretty easy and it's upfront. Um, we, we also, I just want to say that um, the barn that Mr. Barbeau is speaking of is not on his property. It is not on 670 River Road. It is either, it's um, 667 River Road, Dick Moody's, Richard Moody's, or maybe 681, I'm not quite sure, but I believe it's 667 River Road. So the barn that he speaks of, no. the accessory building, I'm speaking right now. I didn't interrupt you, please don't interrupt me. The accessory, what we spoke of earlier is not on his property. We looked that up. So those are the two things I'm concerned about. Number one, enforcement. And well, I guess it's three things and the precedent. The fact that we're changing a huge, huge class two, you know, on, on a resident of commercial without going through town meeting, 
that's pretty big. Anyone can now do anything internet, you know, especially a car dealership. That's not okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Um, I, I would just like to um, ad address some concerns of Ava's um, that she brought up. We did say that we were gonna check with um, our lawyers about the internet because um, we were concerned, or at least I was concerned, as, as, and the, I think the rest of the board was that, um, and as Dave brought up, that we were not able to, um, I'm not sure if we could limit the, the license um, to just right. in, if we issued it. I don't, I don't know if we have that ability um, because this is a state regulated, you know, there's all kinds of regulations related to that. So we need to check with the lawyer about whether um, that is, um, if we're able to do that. And then the other thing is, um, I, you know, we did bring up the enforcement. I'm not, I'm not sure how this could be regulated like to one car at a time. Um, I'm not saying that there would be any problem, Kevin, honestly. I'm just saying yep. that um, I'm, I'm not sure what our, you know, when, you, when, you, when we issue licenses, we have to have the ability to regulate them. And I think there would be, you know, I mean, how do you know if you only have one or more cars? And um, so I, I think we were going to table some this uh, to quite honestly until we had some more information from our yep. lawyers. So and I... I Go ahead, Jennifer. The, the issue with the barn, I do own a barn on my property. It, it's a brown barn. In, it's in between my father-in-law's barn and mm -hmm. my property. So okay. I do have a barn with a space available to store a car. Okay. Jennifer, you had a comment? Yeah, if so, if we're looking at it as far as it being a home occupation, it does say that you could have one car in, in a- right garage so and that would be um, something that the building commissioner would regulate correct so he would be the one that if you know there was a complaint or if he was driving by or if whatever that he would notice if there was more than one vehicle and mm -hmm. you know um mr walden said today that he would be the one that would be monitoring right. well i mean it's just that we do you want to make sure that you have set up some some ability to have success when you have regulations. And Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I'm just I think, for, for that part of the home occupation that would correct. be the bylaw. So because right. I think there's two there's two issues here. There's the home business by right, you know, and have one car and, and that kind of thing. And then there's the second the second issue is do, do we you know bless that business with a class two license? And that's the part that we really need to work on. You can ask right. about that. Because, because I'm not sure we can limit it to the internet and I'm not sure we can limit it to one car at a time. Right. So we'll just have to get a ruling on that. Yeah, because I, I re, we were trying to limit it to 12, right? And I think I remember that we had a huge problem with that. Yeah, I forget there was some there was somewhere where we, we you either gave one or you didn't give one. And there was, you know, that was you didn't really there was not a lot of there was uh, state law regulated yeah, right. the last year. Was, that's not, why not, uh, regulations. Uh, that's why we have to go to the lawyer, I think, on this, because I think we're running into the same problem we did a couple of years ago. Um, um, Ava or Steve's hand is raised again. Okay. Let me see if I'm... You're on yeah. mute. Yep. I can hear you. I can hear you. So um, I'm, I'm not a lawyer or an expert, expert with the Deerfield codes, but under um, section 2200 use regulations, and then specifically 2210, it says use is not expressly provided for herein are prohibited and motor vehicle use motor vehicle sales is not provided for in, in that list of of uh, use uses and so it uh, by my reading since it's not um, provided for it should be prohibited and and additionally look, um, looking at the uh, home occupations as of right, it says businesses or professions incidental to and customarily associated with the principal residential uses or premises may be engaged in. Well, I don't see a used motor vehicle business as something that's incidental to and customarily associated with with president with principal residential use. So I'm really puzzled as to why the building inspector thinks that 
that this is fits under the home occupation uh, as of right. And um, maybe you could also make sure that your council addresses that. Yes, so thank you. Yeah, we can. Yep. So um, yeah, yeah Trevor, I, I really don't understand this because again, I'm just gonna say this again. We read this and had other people read it that if it isn't, you know, if it isn't called for, it's prohibited and it's not residential. So I, I would like to see, you know, a written thing on that from the home. I'm totally baffled that well, he yeah. thinks. We can give you the letter that he wrote. And, okay. and, and again, it says, um, you know, it may be appealed to the Deerfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and, but we will also, you know, obviously as we look to council for this this whole issue, we can ask them the same, you know, same question. I, I, we could get clarification from yeah. our legal counsel. No reason we couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? I, I mean, I have an additional comment. If there's oh, oh, go ahead, Steve. Yep. Okay. I'm under six, uh, under zoning and uh, section 5200 Board of Appeals. I'm um, section 5222. It says the Board of Appeals shall not grant use variances in any residential district of the town. So I don't see that this should even be referred to the Zoning Board of Appeals because they're, they're, they shall not grant use variances in any residential district, and this is a residential district, so I don't Okay. Know. Okay. Um, as we discussed, um, I think we're, as a board, we're all somewhat in consensus to table this, get consensus from uh, opinion from our uh, town council. So um, unless I hear any other, I'd like to have a motion to close the hearing. No, we'll make a motion to uh, uh, just continue, continue, continue the hearing. The hearing. Yeah. Do, do we have to pick a date right now or? Um, yes. I don't know, when's our, when's our next meeting, generally scheduled meeting? June 2nd. Do so we we have, could, yeah, could we put that on the um, schedule, Casey, for June 2nd? So make a motion to um, continue the hearing until June 2nd. And I would second that. Any further discussion? I have none from the board. No. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay, the hearing is Thank closed. you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you. your comments. Thank you, Ava uh, and Steve. Yeah, we'll get some everybody. answers and meet back here on the second. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next thing on our agenda for this evening is the uh, general bylaw change. It's a general agenda neutral language change to select from selectmen to select board. Okay. Yes. Um, Do you like me to read it? Sure. sure. Notice is hereby given that the select board will hold a public hearing pursuant to GL for uh, general laws, chapter 41, section 108A on May 19th, 2021 at 645 PM. The select board proposes to amend the town of Deerfield general bylaws by deleting the word selectman in each reference and replacing it with the term select board and further deleting the words board of selectmen in each reference and replacing it with select board and authorizing the town clerk to make clerical, editorial, and other adjustments to effectuate the changes. Full text of the proposed article may be viewed in the foyer of the municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, or on the town's website, www.deerfieldma.us forward slash home forward slash events forward slash 63361. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, chapter 30A, section 20. The Zoom meeting link is identified in the hearing notice. It's https colon forward slash forward slash zoom.us forward slash J forward slash 911-604-1580 question mark. This is why I didn't read this before. PWD equal sign 
N-K-R-H-V-3-G-Z-S-W-Y-V-S-M-1-J-R-0-X-I-Q-X-P-H-U-K-T-5-U-T-09. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Um, sorry. Passcode is 570-0012. Dial-in is 929-205-6099 or 301-715-8592. The toll-free number is 877-853-5257. Thank you. I think the next time you have to read that out phonetically, like the police have to. <laughs> um, That's just torture. I'm. This is a housekeeping, oh, very a housekeeping article. We voted a couple years ago to change our um, to the select board as more gender neutral. Um, yeah. So it's it's but our bond council. Um, picked up that we did not change it in our bylaws. So we just have to clean up our bylaws so that we can um, not cause our bond council heart failure. <laughs> I'm so glad we're doing this. It makes sense. I think the year uh, I, I was running for office, um, you know, this was a comment from an annual town meeting um, attendee that, you know, at the end of the meeting, everybody kind of has a direction for the select board. And this was one of them. And we, you know, immediately kind of took it up and, and began using the, the term select board for, for everything. Um, and, but you're right, this is just kind of, we need to, now that we do that, we just want to clean it up from all of our um, paperwork and bylaws and all that stuff. So that's it. Uh, do we have any public comment? I entertain a motion to close the hearing. And no hand raised, sorry. Oh, I make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second that motion, Trevor. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Um, make a motion to present this to town annual town meeting. I will second that motion. Carolyn, sorry. Any further, further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Yes. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Great. Okay. So we got through the four public hearings. Very nice. Good. Efficient. So the next thing on our uh, agenda is the Board of Health reports. Um. Well, let's start out with a quick stuff first. Um, we're going to start trapping mosquitoes um, in a couple weeks. Um, and we're just asking people again to pay attention to their yards once we get some rain, uh, just to patrol their yards, make sure there's no standing water and that screens take this opportunity of warm weather, but um, no moisture to, um, you know, make sure your screens are in good shape and, you know, that kind of thing. The other, now uh, the ticks are crazy, crazy They're wild bad. here. I and, got one. Um, so if you have a tick bite, don't forget um, the town of Deerfield subsidizes the tick report, um, you know, costs. So if you want to send your tick to the, uh, you pull a tick off yourself and you want to get it tested or your kids or whatever, um, you can send it into the tick report. Okay. And things could be bad for <laughs> my mother's day <laughs> gift from my grandkids. <laughs> they could couldn't be a find tick, a, not a mosquito. Out. They could not find a mosquito, so they have a person <laughs> fed female deer, deer tick. <laughs> so I have a new stuffy. <laughs> it's pretty pathetic. Yeah. So anyway, that's to remind Perfect. people Perfect. we're we're going to put it out in the in the town offices to make sure to remind people that they can get your ticks tested. And they can be really tiny. I had one on my leg a couple weeks back. Um, very small so there you got to really look for it and yeah, please no. check yourself yeah that must have been a challenge for you with the other stuff that was going on with you oh god yeah it was just getting over shingles and <laughs> the last thing i need is lyme disease yeah. 
Um, just uh, for an update on our statistics, um, uh, last year was um, roughly about 36% of our ticks had Lyme disease. And for the last 10 years, it's been going between 32, 33 to 38% was the high year um, for um, Lyme disease. However, well, the one thing that is so awful is we started um, about 2% and we're now up to 11% of our ticks carry those awful bacterial infections. Mm, and really. they can actually be worse than Lyme disease. So um, the trend is definitely increasing. And if you have had a tick on you, um, you really should try to get it um, tested. So they, they, can, they can be serious illness. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll take a big guy and knock him to the knees. I mean, they're really, any, I mean, it doesn't matter what, you can really get really sick from these things. So please be careful and use that pernethrin. Is that right? Pernethrin, how you pronounce it? Sure. You can get it. Pernethrin, whatever. Pernethrin. You can spray. It's very inexpensive to go and get the Bronco horse spray mm -hmm. from, from Tractor Supply that has enough per, permethium in it. And you just spray your pant legs or your shoes and your socks. Don't spray yourself. But you, you know, you um, spray your clothing, and it really does keep the ticks away. It, my husband goes out in the woods to work wood, and you know, there's dead ticks on him, but he does not. He hasn't had a tick bite on him since he sprays his clothes, and um, you know, that's the only thing that's we've been keeping my grandkids safe too mm -hmm. when they're in the yard. So yeah. this is actually a really serious public health thing. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, same house, same yard four wild kids out in the woods, never pulled a tick off of any of my kids. My grandkids can't even go into the lawn without having to do tick checks now. And it is very serious. So yeah. I, I hope people pay attention. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Then, um, so moving on to uh, COVID. This has been extremely, extremely disappointing that, um, you know, everything is being lifted so fast. But um, I have to say, I've been talking to people up and down the valley, um, you know, boards of health and um, health uh, and, and Department of Health people. And, you know, everybody is just saying that there's just no way we can keep anything stricter. Even though I'm, I'm not in favor of lifting mass use, um, we're just going to have to go align ourselves with the CDC and the state um, recommendations. The state is aligning itself with the CDC. So um, just based on my conversations, I just don't think that we have any ability uh, to do anything more. And, um, but I have to say most of our cases are kids now. This and there's, there's quite a few at the moment. So, I mean, don't think we're out of the woods and everybody, you know, the adults have been vaccinated because children are getting this disease. Uh, emails are, are dinging twice, three times a day with children in our community that have COVID or being tested for COVID or at risk of COVID. So um, it, it's still a problem. So please, you know, don't think it's over, but I'm very excited to be rounding the corner. And a lot of our adults are um, vaccinated. Um, I was very lucky to get mine this weekend on our last clinic. Um, it's been a long time coming, but finally for my age, we can get done. Um, but I do, I do think people still need to be careful and, and you know, just still protect themselves and their children, especially until uh, we do have a clinic coming on Friday for the Friday at Frontier. The, the link is on our web page and it's for 12, 12 and up. So yep. we're hoping um, we'll have hopefully another one in this, uh, another two or three in the summer at some point. Um, the trials will be completed and, you know, there will be a emergency use. Um, I'm granted, I'm sure for younger than 12, but right now, um, Bay State is coming and we are offering the Pfizer um, vaccine, which is approved for kids 12 and over. Um, I, I just, the group that is now not vaccinated is our kids. And it's just so distressing to me to see that the numbers of kids that are getting it. And that, and that's happening down in West Springfield. When, Jean, when I talked to Jean Galloway, that's happening in Northampton. When I talked to Meredith Leary, 
and I've we're calling out in the Berkshires, uh, Sharon Mart uh, Sandra Martin, who is in, has contacts all in the boards of health out there, same story. It's the kids that are getting sick now and we just, we just need to be careful. So mm -hmm. um, I guess I would make a motion, if there's no, no more comments, that we would um, be consistent with the state and CDC requirements. It's basically no mass for outdoor recess or outdoor sports and um, but you would continue mass inside the school building. So um, that right now is, and that could change by the end of the week. But I guess, so my motion would be that we would just remain consistent with the CDC and state mm -hmm. regulations. I'll second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Uh, any further discussion? No. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Kevin McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfer. Okay, the other, um, the other, only other thing that um, we are talking about, I did talk to Natalie Blay. She has signed on as co-sponsor of a way that we can keep our Zoom meetings in, uh, and be in compliance with the open meeting law. So she, it's a new law that um, she is um, co-sponsoring. So I was hoping that we would, um, uh, have consensus or make a motion to direct Casey to send um, just a short email to Natalie that we are in favor of it tonight and that, um, you know, it, when she needs a letter of support or when it keeps moving, when it gets out of committee or something, we, you know, send a, you know, support letter. Uh, we have good attendance through Zoom meetings, but I also, you know, uh, it's safe. I so, uh, just for, I'll second that motion for discussion. Are we, uh, so you're saying this would still be a hybrid kind of thing where we would can, we would start working on a plan to reopen our, our, our meetings. Right, to the public, be able to. But still people could join us still that want to do it from their home. They don't want to drive down here at seven at night or stay till nine. They can do it from their living room and, and participate, which I think is important. It opens up democracy a lot more. It, it also would eliminate the quorum at the town hall. Someone would be at the town hall, but say in the in this, you have to have two for us, board of selectmen. So yep. you, Trevor, usually meet at the town hall. So mm -hmm. you could come and be at the town hall, and Dave and I could still be at home. Gotcha. The requirement yep. that Dave go in and be there, and then I, you know, allow me to go home. So the the right. bill allows the the removes a quorum requirement physical quorum requirement of a board or committee or whatever is being created. but we would be able to um still have the zoom meeting it seems like that's the future right i mean yeah. haven't we learned that we can get along and figure out how to run ourselves in even in a pandemic and not have to all be in the same room now, does Natalie think this is all going to be in place before the June 15th order is rescinded? Uh, we've been raising this issue for a couple months now and um, trying to get the governor to be ready for when he lifts the state of emergency. It's, it's, it's not a problem until after June 15th. So um, we're going to get through, um, you know, a lot of our, our meetings and, you know, where where we would have a lot of people but um you know like there are joint meetings like this you know when we have finance capital and select board meetings or planning board meetings and select board meetings or whatever when you have these big giant meetings um so i think we'll be be you know we'll be done town meeting and we'll be done um our majority of our stuff so even if it doesn't get sorted out in time, I think we're still going to be okay because we're not going to be um, having a huge lot of stuff after town meeting. And, and it's similar to the opening of the town hall. I mean, we, you cannot force people to get vac vaccinations under emergency use, vac you know, approved vaccines. So, you know, we don't, we don't want our town hall operations to be um, interrupted, but if, the state of emergency is lifted after um, June 15th. And we have, you know, we, we really try to have an opening plan um, ready to go after June 15th. We, we've made it through town meeting and, and Barbara is able to file all the things with our attorney general and, 
we can and we can do all the paperwork. So if we have to shut town down town hall uh, because of an outbreak or something like that, we don't have a capacity issue or a continuing operations issue because most of our stuff has been done a little bit, you know. Um, I personally would like to see the the town clerk treasurer's office the window open sooner than the fifteenth, and have all the other offices by appointment only. So to see Brenda, uh, the assessor's office, our select board's office, the building commissioner's office, those would be by appointment. But at least they have the plexiglass and everything already for mm -hmm. the clerk's office. Um, I think it's about time we thought about opening that up. Yep. Well, I, I am concerned about you know not having people not being vaccinated though. Yeah, but it's uh, you know you're still going to have social distancing. We're still going to have masks That's inside true. the building. Um, it, and yeah. it is good weather, so we could have the doors open. I think yeah. having the doors open is what's critical. Yeah. You know, to have air exchange. Yeah. I mean, at some point, we we need to do this, and the opportunity for people that have been that wanted to be vaccinated are there. So, I mean. We've given every opportunity to make sure people are vaccinated. And if they're not choosing to vaccinate at that point, you know, you can only lead them to water so much. But, you know, if they can't, I, I don't know what else to say. That's, you know, like we had to get the kids back to the school, you know, and we had, we were successful at that and um, had done a very good job, um, I think, managing that risk. And so I think we need to, at, at this point, move forward pretty quick here. Yeah. But I'll wait for a reopening plan. I know that Casey's working on that. She's been yeah. tied up with a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, you know. hopefully we'll have something maybe for June second. Can we yeah. put that on the agenda, Casey? Great. Do you think you might have something together by then? I will try to get you something before June second, at least to okay. read. I have talked to Dick about it. Um, there needs to be a couple of of nuances in the plan changed. So we went through it, but I, when I started to do that work, I noticed that I need to look at some of the details with him because okay. if we are going to, the highest traffic in here is the, the window. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually seemingly the, the, the highest requests I get that I've heard. I've had some phone calls that some people stop me outside. Um, so I think that is something that we really have to consider. Um, it's just, I want to, I want to work on the nuances with that with Dick for a little bit before I hand you a draft. Okay. Okay. Jennifer. It's also the, I mean, the, the meetings, right? So that's another mm -hmm. time where we have high traffic. So would it be, are you considering it just being the window and then meetings still being hybrid or yes. Yes. until yeah. June 15th? Right. I, we're, that's why we're, I'm hoping the board will support Natalie's um, bill because then there's no quorum requirement. Um, it, it, as long as someone is in the town office and, or it doesn't even need to be actually, it's up to us apparently. So um if we could keep this this way i mean all three of us could be at home or all three of us could be in the meeting or it could just be trevor it doesn't there's no set requirement and casey and i've been talking about that and making it um the visual is important and there may be some things that we need to upgrade mm -hmm. to change with that if we're going to have a hybrid yeah better um, sound just, right so everybody can hear Nobody Not just sound, hear. but Thank visual, you. because it's hard with the small camera we have on top of the smart board. It's very difficult for people to, it has no Zoom capability, so it's hard to see mm -hmm. what somebody might be looking at. Yep. The other piece of it is moderating the meeting. This is a lot of time. And it is. the issue for us is, is, you know, the expectation for our workload is to work our at least eight hours a day. And then do the Zoom meetings on top of that has been very difficult. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the expectation for an employee that isn't 
an exempt employee is that they be, they have an eight to four job or a nine to five job. And so this would require some flexibility in addressing the need to either not moderate, which I don't think is a good idea, or have chairs or a designated official on each committee moderate yeah. and do the meeting minutes subsequent to that where the person doing the minutes watches them. You know, in some cases, some committees, they have people, they have a committee member that does the minutes during the meeting, but not all committees are able to do that. So in this case, we watch your meetings and do the minutes afterward, but we can, because of the requirement in the law, the changes to the law that the governor made, within 24 hours, this recording has got to be posted. So people have an understanding of what was discussed, yeah. or you put a set of draft minutes up. And so there's a bunch of nuances with hybrid meetings that are very, that are, may take some time to work out. Okay. So, did we, uh, did we vote on that? We didn't vote motion. on the Natalie. All right. We, we had a second, we had a motion. Oh, I, yeah. Daniel. Okay. I, I, I Oh, okay. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Is that something uh, we have to sign or can we just use it? No, um, I just wanted Casey to send an email. Um, okay. I, I, when I talked to Natalie, she said she just signed on as a co-sponsor um, and then she would uh, be in contact with us um, when it came out of committee and, um, and, ha and, and, we, and it might be, uh, we might have some input into it. I mean, I think it's, I think it's really important that the state uh, loosen some of those requirements, like within 24 hours, this has to be posted and stuff like that. If you're going to this hybrid, nobody has staff for a prolonged period of time. I mean, this has been unbelievable hassle and an unbelievable drain on people for the past year, but you can't keep this up as a permanent thing. It's awful. I mean, you know, Casey, I mean, Casey and Jen, I mean, they're working- And Alex. And Alex. 50 hours a week. Come on. 60 hours a week. 60. Easy. I know. You can't. You so can't. We're approving it. Jennifer, thanks. I know. Well, I know that they're putting in a heck of a lot of time because, you know, we're, we're and, here. And, and we're you know, here. and then it's hard to do the day-to-day -day stuff that really needs to happen because they're, you know, exhausted from doing meetings till nine or 10 at night. It's just, it's just too much. It's also yeah. the scheduling of the meetings. I mean, right. It takes an hour for her to schedule a meeting, an yeah. hour, one at a time. It's ridiculous. That's too much. I'm getting a little faster. <laughs> she, oh, she's got it down. I, I give her a lot of credit. There's like five or six steps that you have to follow. And yeah. then the regular posting requirements of making sure it gets up on the bulletin board, moving it to the website. But first you have to check all your data. When I was reading that Zoom link and I did it sort of to see if I could read it, but also to really make it clear to people that this is complicated. Even reading a Zoom link is complicated. So I understand people's frustration with it. On the other hand, I have seen participation increase. And I've made that comment anecdotally to other officials at the state level of government, because I think we're gonna have to bite the bullet and join the private sector in this type of collaboration and work. as. It's just something, we're very late to this game. Very late to this game. I have friends that have been doing this for six or seven years. We meaning towns to remote participation. Yeah. Well, private businesses have been yeah. doing that anyway too. But, um, okay, well, thank you everyone. Mm -hmm. Who made the motion? I missed that. Trevor. Um, Trevor, thank oh. you. Carolyn second it. I think Carolyn made it. Carolyn, oh, she brought it up and I thought you made the motion. But, yeah, uh, I think she remembered. Either one. We both one support it. The, other. <laughs> the idea was it's, it, it's, it's not to do anything important. It's just to make sure that you connect with Natalie and, and make sure that we have some, you have to, you can tell her what the issues are and that we get, we get some kind of resolution and then we support, send a support letter. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I knew. Nice. I write myself little notes. That's why you hear me typing, sorry. 
uh, any more uh, Board of Health comments or anything? No, okay. I, I just just please encourage people to just stay safe. Okay, uh, next thing is uh, minutes. We have the minutes from. Um, I make a motion that we um, I'm gonna get the dates and the minutes. Make a motion to support uh, to approve the minutes of uh, April twentieth. April twentieth and March twelfth. April twenty first. April twenty first. Yep. It was yeah, April and April twentieth and twenty first, right? Yeah, but I had a March 12th too here. I think Casey was working on that still, right? Weren't you adjusting yeah, that? Yeah, that again? one I still needed. One of them yeah. I needed to fit. Let me just. I think we have that. the 20th and the 21st. Okay. Then I revised yes. my, I, I revise my uh, motion to just be April 20th and 21st. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Nope. All in favor? Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Minutes have been approved. Uh, next thing on our agenda is the CSO. Um, what so is the, the, co the corresponder agreement for approval and, sign and signatory authority or signatory authorization by a member of the board or a de designee? for the agreement um, oh, we did this, no? clinical services. I thought we did this already. We did. No. Uh, we didn't vote it. Oh. We didn't vote it. We reviewed I, it, we didn't vote it. Okay, okay, I make a motion that we we uh, authorize um, Casey to um, sign the clinical co-responder pilot agreement. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried three zero zero. Okay, so just what Jeff's been waiting for: fiscal year twenty twenty two budget for approval. Okay. You had resignations. Did you want to do that first, or? Oh yeah. I just know if we skip yeah, that, we wanted to on purpose. Or... We're not letting anybody resign right now. <laughs> so I actually missed one, and I I had Jennifer post the the packet with the included one. Let me give you the two. We have three resignations. I'll just tell you which ones they're from. You can see it on a couple of them, but I realized I was missing Judy Bardwell. So we have a resignation from Cultural Council by Jack Cavaco. And okay. two resignations from Tritown Beach of Bethany Foley and Judy Bardwell. So we'll make a motion to- And we have um, an item unanticipated is a resignation of one of our transfer station employees, Luke Morton. Okay. So we'll take one at a time here. So um, I'll make a motion to accept um, with regret the resignation of um, Jack Cavaco from the um, Deerfield Cultural Council. And I just wanna thank him for all his years of um, of help um, guiding that um, that committee and council and doing great work uh, for the arts in Deerfield. Um, I'll second that, okay. Carolyn. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Carolyn Aye. Ness, aye. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfer. So, and then also um, I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of uh, Bethany Foley from the Tritown Beach um, committee. And again, thank her for years, years of service. I mean, longer than I've, I've been involved here. She's done uh, great work for the kids and for that, um, you know, allowing, allowing the community to, uh, a place to swim. And it's, it's been a, it's a thankless job. It's a lot of work and uh, people don't realize how much work it is and uh, coordinating all of that, the volunteers and the, you know, swim programs and all that stuff. So, um, so regretfully we, we understand that you know people sometimes have other things come up and and i think there's two new members from waitley with new vision so um so just thank her for that work 
I'll second that. And I, and again, express our thanks for people volunteering their time. And, and especially for opportunities for our kids. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Tri Town has been there for a lot of years and a lot of kids have taken advantage of it, swimming lessons and everything else. So yes. Been critical to have the volunteers that we've had over the years. So, okay. Uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfham. And um, Casey, the other uh, person that was resigning from the Tri Town as well. It was that? Judy Bardwell. Oh, Judy Bardwell. Again, thank her for her her service and and time. I mean, that does leave two. That leaves two people with with no representation on the Tri Town Beach from Deerfield at the moment, right? So. Um, if anybody would like to get involved in server community and help, um, you know, help help guide a place for our children to recreation in, in the summertime. And um, there's a lot of good things that can happen there. It, it really takes, you know, people's time to really make things happen. Um, so uh, again, with regret, um, we'll accept her resignation and thank her for her service. I'll second that, Carolyn. But yes, thank you very much. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Um, and did you say there was one other? There's an appointment? For the There's an appointment, yes. Um, Sorry, there is an item on anticipate. It's listed under items on anticipated. Oh, it's, it's a transfer station employee is resigning, Luke Morton. Oh. Okay, so I thank I thank Luke uh, for his service. Um, all those Saturdays, I would visit him at the transfer station and uh, thank him for for his work and um, accept his resignation. Um, I'll second that, Carolyn. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. And there is a. Um, there is a notice from the uh, Deerfield Economic Development Industrial Corporation, DDIC, uh, says the yes. DDIC board wants to notify you that Rick Andrioli membership renewal is due on June 30th, 2021. Rick has served the DDIC treasurer for many years. Our board is pleased to state that Rick has done a superb and highly professional job in this position. We strongly recommend that the town of Deerfield select board reappoint Rick should he desire to accept. So I- you know yeah, I was just going to say it's a little early for our yeah. appointments, but um, uh, DDIC does have some requirements. And so this is similar to our police officers. We um, appoint them early uh, mm -hmm. just so that there is absolutely no lapse in um, their ability to do things. So yeah. um, Trevor, you were going to make a motion or I can yes, make a motion? No, I'd make a motion to, to thankfully uh, reappoint Rick Andrioli to the and DDIC. I second, and I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. And, and so there's one more. It's an appointment to by Susan Half to Open Space and Recreation Committee. Oh, wonderful. Yes. So, uh, she, I would... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I would make that motion to appoint Sue Half to the Open Space and Recreation Committee and thank her for stepping forward. Yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll second that motion enthusiastically. <laughs> yes. uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay, welcome aboard. <laughs> Great. So, budgets. David, yes. Before we dig into the budget, would the board consider approval of the letter of support for Franklin County Chamber of Com Commerce's application for a DDS grant? If you look, it's on page. So. Diane, this is I've, something that Trevor asked me to add on Monday afternoon. Yeah, I, yeah. I've been working with um, Diane a bit over over the last year or so, and as she's been, um, she's uh, Diane is the 
council uh, or is the chamber of commerce chair and she um, has been looking for a, a, a new spot and for grant opportunities to move the chamber and the tourism center to um, it's right now in the registry of uh, motor vehicles in Greenfield and she's looking to locate it in Deerfield um, with all the kind of economic activity that we have going on in town she kind of like to be you know move closer and, and this opportunity she's been working with uh, Stork Deerfield and has found a spot um, and with this letter of support she may be able to get a grant to move the Chamber of Commerce and the Tourism Center to um, Historic Deerfield so we think it, I just think it's a great idea and um, love to support her. Um, I make a motion that we um, do endorse this uh, and sign this letter of support. I think it's an excellent idea myself. Can I make a friendly amendment to um, possibly um, use our stamps if, if, unless you could get here tomorrow morning because she really needs to get that out tomorrow and I didn't want to hold it up. I just want to get it scanned and get it back to her. Um, I, I have no problem using a stamp. I, I meant to sign it this afternoon and yeah. I forgot it in anticipation of us voting yeah. yes. Um, so Casey, can you use our stamp? Okay. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Thank you. Yes, I can. Anything that, I mean, I certainly understand these grant applications. Oh, the timing is, yeah, Oh, yeah. God, it's terrible. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Okay. Thank Any you. Further discussion on that? No. All those in favor? I, Carolyn Ness. I, Trevor McDaniel. Dave Wolfram. Okay. No. Okay. Now we like to go through the budget. Do we have to wait for the finance committee to go through all everything because mm -hmm. of the no the no adjustments? No. So the finance committee, if you look at, I gave you the spreadsheet, and one of the changes that I had made was I indicated which budgets um, are need to be revised. So if you look at the spreadsheet, you'll see that finance committee has, mo has voted most of the budgets. And so what I thought we could do is. I thought we were meeting scrolling. next Tuesday. I thought we were meeting next Tuesday and just voting this with this, with the uh, um, we, um, finance committee. We can, I know that, I know that we were waiting for uh, Barbara to adjust our, uh, based on our vote the other day to adjust the- um, Brenda, yes. Excuse That's me, what Brenda, she's doing. to adjust, adjust those numbers. So I don't know if they're, they're probably not in this packet, right? They're not. Was, right. And so. so what you see is all the budgets that were approved from the finance committee that haven't had any changes. There's four budgets that they had left as before the vote on the plan last night. Um, and so what they're going to do is they're going to address it. But Trevor had said something to me about making sure that we start voting the budget. So I put it in mm -hmm. and I used the spreadsheet that Brenda had sent out on Friday and then I just went through yeah. and gave myself a an X, a, like an X mark just to know yeah. which ones I needed to to Still tell working. you we needed to wait on. So if you don't want to do it until Tuesday, I'm okay with that, but we need we definitely need quorum at that meeting so that we can vote it and we would right. probably do it after finance committee is done reviewing the rest of the budget. So what I could That's do fine. is I could go through the general government and I don't necessarily want to say the numbers, but I could say the general government titles, mm -hmm. unless you want me to say the numbers no, and I I'll just stay away from the ones that we need to wait on. Well, is there, I mean, you mean because of salaries, right? Yes. Right. Because of salaries. So you, do you want to go through each one and just do them now? Or do you want do, that aren't going to change? Or do you want to wait till Tuesday and we just do well, them That's all? what I was thinking. So what I could do is I could say, um, I could start with, so I'll just start at the top, the moderator's budget, select board salaries, select board and administrator expense, finance committee, accountant expense, assessor's salaries, assessor's expense, and, and go through that way. And we could, the what I could do is I could list them change. for you, or well, we could make a motion to open it. And then I could just list them and you could say, okay, so move to approve on this date 
according to the schedule as presented. I, do it I that way we, if you want. That would be quicker, I think. So the only ones with X's are the ones that may change because of, of Correct. Vote the other night. Okay. There's a couple of them that are expense accounts. Mm -hmm. And so she, Brenda hasn't finished everything. Yeah. So right, as right. it's presented in the packet, there's X marks. The ones that don't need to be voted are select board staff salaries, accountant salary, assessor's administrative assistant salary, clerk treasurer collector salaries, inspections department salary, department payroll, sorry. Yep. General highway payroll, board of health salary, senior center expense, Tilton library expense, recreation department director salary. Those are the only ones that don't need to be voted. Okay. Right. So and, would you uh, prefer that I say with the exclusion of these named accounts? We well, we should probably read them in the amounts, right? I mean, I think that's probably you could, yeah. Well, I mean, we can read them with the amounts. It's fine. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just run down. Yeah, I was going to say if you. I would just skip the ones them, that we can't vote with right. them now, and then we could just vote at the end. All at once, right? So I'm going to read. Um, I'll start at the top. Moderator, uh, four hundred dollars. Select board salaries, salaries. sixteen thousand dollars. Select board and administrator expense. Uh, Thirteen thousand one hundred dollars. Finance committee five hundred dollars. Accountant expense sixteen thousand five twenty five. Assessor salary eleven thousand dollars. Assessor's expense twenty three thousand one twenty five. Assessor uh, assessor's quintennial recertification twenty thousand dollars. Treasurer collector expense. $31,110. Legal expense, $74,000. Personnel board, $500. Um, IT hardware, $5,000. PEG access capital, $4,000. Contracted services, $229,558. Town clerk expense, $17,598. Conservation Commission, $1,000. Open Space Committee, $20,000. Planning Board, $7,000. Open Space. Hand up. Open Space Committee is revised to $10,000. Oh, thank you. Um, Open Space Committee, $10,000. Uh, Planning Board, $7,000. Zoning Board of Appeals, Appeals $1,000. Agricultural Commission, $100. Energy Committee, $1,000. And uh, Town Building Maintenance. Yeah, Town Building Maintenance, $81,100. Town Office Expense, $13,250. General Insurance, $60,000. Uh, police Payroll. Nine hundred. Actually, I think I forgot a check mark on that, but yeah. On that one, okay. Let's wait then. Um, police department expense is one hundred nineteen thousand three hundred dollars. Police department cruiser fifty five thousand dollars. Inspections department expense four thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Emergency management two thousand eight hundred dollars. Canine control twenty thousand four hundred eighty five dollars. Go ahead. Police Casey. department expenses is okay. It's nine, $933,159. I just looked at my notes. You mean the police department payroll? payroll. It's okay, okay to go. Yeah. Okay, because it's contracted. Okay, so that's uh, $933,159. Uh, Deerfield Elementary School, $4,995,986. Frontier Regional School, $4,000,000. $16,567. Frontier Regional Transportation, $122,920. Franklin uh, Tech Assessment, $323,023. Franklin Tech Capital, $17,697. General Highway Expense, $260,050. 
winter snow and ice removal, $90,000. Street lighting, $37,000. Transfer station expense, $211,600. Test well monitoring and maintenance is $40,000. Um, I think that's it, right? Nope, Board of Health expense. Oh, is it keep going? Okay, yep, sorry. Uh, Board of Health expense, $33,525. Emergency COVID-19 expense, $15,000. Council on Aging, $500. Veterans District Assessment, $13,910. Veterans Benefits, $21,000. ADA Coordinator is $250. Uh, summer swim program, $1,310. Tritown Beach expense, $18,160. Historical commission, $1,175. Veterans Day Memorial Day expense, $2,000. Maturing debt, $483,614. Interest on mature, maturing debt, $132,867. Interest on temporary loans, $5,000. Uh, FERCOG assessment, uh, $41,574. Unfunded sick and vacation, $10,000. Franklin County uh, Regional Retirement, $563,504. Workers' compensation, $563,504. Workers' compensation, $47,144. Unemployment insurance, $27,000. Group insurance for just town is $292,280. Group insurance for the school is $657,526. Medicare insurance, $103,987. Uh, then we have reserve fund. Yep, the reserve fund is $100,000. The SCEMS um, Enterprise Fund is $309,243. The Dickinson Library Trust is $2,661. Chapter 74, Smith Vocational Special Education Tuition is $38,000. Smith Vocation Transportation is $22,500. OPEB funding is $41,610. The 350th celebration is $10,000. And the prior year bills, $14,120. Yes. I believe that is it at the moment. You've already voted capital. So that's all set. Uh, is and we moved uh, mosquito control into Board of Health, correct, Carolyn? Correct. And we're not doing some of these other items. Yeah, the, yeah, these are all. You're all muted, set. Carolyn. Okay, good. good I apologize, Carolyn. I forgot. Yes, the mosquito <laughs> the mosquito control is now in the in board, board of Health, right? Yeah. Okay. So I would make a motion to approve all those budgets that I wrote at the amounts that I mentioned. And I will second that. Yeah. Carolyn. I'm Any further discussion? No, I guess the, the only thing I'd mention is that we'd come back and vote the rest of the budgets after the select uh, the finance committee and, and select board has a meeting next Tuesday. Yeah. Yes. Great. I, I just would feel more comfortable if we actually had the dollar amounts. That's yeah, what, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, so I will second that. Great. Any further discussion? Nope. I, Carolyn. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I have one thing. On the Smith Folk, have we yes. got confirmation that the second student's there? Or we no? don't. They haven't sent us confirmation, and they don't necessarily have to decide right away. The worst thing that happens is if that person chooses not to go to Smith Folk, the money will return to the general to free cash yeah. once FY22 is closed. Okay. Or I'm sorry, the general fund. Yeah, general fund. Okay. We could, if we did find out between now and town meeting or now when we publish the budget, mm -hmm. um, if we had to, we could reduce on the floor, but yeah. we haven't heard from them. Okay. 
Okay. And I did tell Darius to get in touch with me once he knew too. Okay. So, uh, so and... it's the board going to go to the meeting on for the finance committee as a joint participant on Tuesday, the 25th. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I yeah, have that way we can do it. We can vote it. Um, Casey, did you get from a May 26 info night? Oh, one sec. Yes, it's we up. just got to vote on that. You guys are in the middle of a motion, yeah. so I just wanted to clarify, Sorry. Trevor. Your motion is to approve the budgets as read into the record. Yes. Okay. And Carolyn, did you second that? Yes, I yes. did. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just keeping notes for myself. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Great. Okay. One step closer. Yep. And all those meetings we had with finance committee were pretty productive. I think so. I, very, very helpful. I think so. Their, their help. And I very much appreciate the board taking the time to work with finance capital and the personnel board to really pull all of this together. It's, it's, we very much appreciate it. It's great to have Would the help. Would you extend um, a thank you to um, Julie Shelfont because she's been mm. very cooperative. She's been great. And Jack Davey, I will extend yeah, it to all both. Actually, I'll <laughs> extend it to Raloon too. Yeah, she's everybody's been, been to working together and I really, really appreciate it. How do you pronounce your name? Raloon? Raloon. Yep. Raloon as in balloon. I messed that up for the first three meetings. She probably doesn't. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> well, I was adoring she's, her the she's, other night. She forgave she me, so street. I feel better now. <laughs> so uh, did we did we vote the outdoor mask, sports mask thing already? That's what I was about oh. to ask. Um, the outdoor sports mask is part of the CDC and state um, recommendations. There, so we've uh, already voted that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We vote that as part of uh, aligning ourselves with the CDC and the state. I mean, they're just, uh, even though people are really concerned about uh, every, there is definitely a, a, an uptick in cases and they're all kid cases for the most part. Um, they're just, we have no enforcement. I mean, people are just done. So, just gonna have to go. Carolyn, can I ask a question, please? Sure. I think it might be helpful for particularly the recreation department to have a formal vote. Would the board consider the following motion? A motion to align the town with the approved CDC and state guidance related to the change in mask wearings mask wearing no that was our vote that was our vote casey because i didn't have it down that's why i was asking yep. yeah no we, we we vote to align ourselves with the cdc and state um requirements okay i had discussed that previously i said there was no no mask for recess and outdoor sports um you know and uh but we would continue the mass which is right now this could change but we would continue the mask indoors at the schools. Um, but that could be changing. I mean, that's what we're back to where, you know, things change on a few days, every few days. So that's why we just said that we were aligning ourselves with the state recommendations. We are not doing anything more strict or more loose. Okay, so that really means that if we're aligning ourselves with the guidance on wearing masks, that means everybody understands that as these things change, it automatically follows whatever CDC and the NDPH decide. That is okay. a, that is consensus of all the boards of health that I've talked to, whether they're out in the Berkshires or where they're up and down the valley. Everybody is just aligning themselves because there's just no way that we can enforce anything that's stricter at this point. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Because there's too much, too many. Um, too many variables and and too, you know too many groups are interacting with each other and it just, people just don't think it's enforceable okay thank you okay, next in answer to your question carolyn yes there is a notice of the information session up on the website under may 26th 
and tomorrow that's the biggest project on my desk is to finish that up and confer with Brenda on a couple of things because because the budget isn't finalized it's going to be I have to say I'm not going to be able to put slides up with exact numbers but we can give people an outline of what the budget impacts have been and that's through percentages and then add the numbers in for that final um, presentation okay. and I would I had already had a conversation with Anna Lee over email about identifying the zoning changes. Um, and she's got, a, it, she and Chris have been working on fact sheets for those. Okay. I appreciate so people it. People can accept, expect to see a presentation or a packet of some sort go up reasonably soon, except it, it may not be the final version that we present that night. No, that's fine, Casey. I just, um, people had inquired. I had a few, couple phone calls about, um, you know, that it wasn't up yet. So you know how it is on our website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had gotten a couple phone calls too, and we finished that up. Um, I forget what day it was, Jennifer. <laughs> she did it. Yeah, so it's up. First, I just put it up on the main news section on the front page of our website. And then people were calling. So then I put it under the date where we, you know, so now it's over there also. Um, we also sent a press release to the paper um, about the information session as well as town meeting. And then I just put a placeholder in the calendar for town meeting on June 12th. So everybody should be. Good. Can you um, Can you just put it out on our social media? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Next thing on our agenda is mail. So you had a couple of items of mail. Um, one of the things that I received after a conference call with uh, community, oh, I always get their stupid name wrong. <laughs> community Health. Uh, community uh, Health. Yeah, Community Health Centers. Sent, a community Health Center sent over a description of what a community health worker does. We didn't have this before, but we needed to have a conference call to sort of understand that a little bit better. And so I put it in your mail for your review. Um, the, town, the town could contract for this service if we feel it rises to that level. But again, I don't even have finish guidance from ARPA. And in fact, my next, the first ARPA meeting that I've been able to attend is tomorrow afternoon. So I'll have a lot more information, I hope, and hopefully slides by Friday or Monday. Can you, about that. Can you make sure that it gets disseminated because, um, you know, we just, we got to figure out what we're going to do. And um, it well, would part of the issue is, is you know, if we're going to do a contracted service and we intend to use ARPA funds to do it, we just need to have a better idea of what that's going to entail before we would get into any kind of agreement. And oh, we still don't have enough information right now. Oh, I know. I agree. Um, so is there a boo um, a meeting for the senior center on, on, on Monday? Is that I think it's on Monday. Hold on a second. Oh, Trevor just walked out. I'll bet he goes back to his computer. I think it's Monday at five. Okay. So um, I, was, was there any discussion on the agenda for um, discussing the SIG grant? I don't know. I haven't seen an agenda yet. All right. I don't know if Trevor's seen an agenda yet either. I have, I have, a I have not been, been confirmed as a meeting yet. But okay, because we thought there was going to be one on on Monday, Monday at yep. five. Well, sure I, I just wanted to be able. Unfortunately, I have four meetings that night, but I I really want to be able to um, make sure we discuss the SIG grant with the board of oversight, because part of the community or the so the community social worker is going to be the SIG grant outreach. It's, a, it's an upgraded person doing the outreach for the seniors. And if we use the ARPA funds to supplement it, we'll be able to contract through the um, 
that position is currently empty. And if we use some ARPA funding, we can supplement some hours for the town, plus we can use the SIG grant and have this much more um, certified, more robust person helping our seniors um, under the grant. And, and, and I think because the pilot, we can build our story so that we can get the SIG grant for the following three year, uh, you know, another three year cycle. Um, because Emmett, who has been our number one um, advocate has now since retired and we, we're just gonna get thrown into the pool with you know, senior centers that are much better and I don't think we're gonna get funded. So we have to come up with a way that we can um, you know, be more competitive for the SIG grant. And you know, I, I feel like we have a little window of opportunity to try to figure out how, how to set up this person so that we can bill this person's services, whatever the person provides for us as a town we can then find the coding, medical coding that we could bill. Uh, they just have to figure it out. And we have to figure out what that person is actually providing for our community on those couple extra hours. Um, because the community health center is willing to hire a person and give us half time. And so we'd use 12 hours from the SIG grant and then we'd have a few hours for the town, town of Deerfield. And, um, I mean, it's a huge opportunity, I think, and we don't need very much money and, and we can, I'm sure we can figure out a way to bill um, insurance for this that would be sustainable. So it, it actually, would... that's one of the problems that community health centers having is how to bill for those types of services. They're having a, a difficult time doing it too. So right. if they haven't worked it out, that's, that's an issue. Well, this, this is no, it's, it gives us a few months to figure this out. What they have to do is they have to be able to provide the services that are billable. And we need to figure out, you know, if you look, we, we approve the CSO person that is gonna respond with the police. We have on the average between 30 and 35 events a year that we know, you know, consistently that the CS, CSO person is gonna respond with our police. That's like emergency care. What we, what this community social worker person is going to do is do like preventative or primary care. So if we have a suicidal teen that has been had is being, uh, you know, the police respond to and the CSO person responds to, then we have this community social worker that will actually, when this teen is not in a crisis situation in that response time, will actually follow up and make sure that person is getting the right care or has the right resources available or whatever. So it doesn't fall, fall through the cracks and then have to be another crisis intervention or, you know, heaven forbid a, a death. So, I mean, that's kind of the example I have in mind is what we would be providing is, or have available resources if you have no idea um, what is available, someone, and then also follow up, but also then our seniors, this person would be qualified to do the SIG grant with much better credentialing and better service because they're more qualified um, to offer services. So I, I think it's a win-win and, and we'll figure out if there's a need in the community that is documented need well, you know, just similar to the, like the 30 or 35 events we know that happen um, in, with the police department, we'll be able to document the need and then we'll figure out how to do the medical billing code. And, and, and as a pilot with the community health service, it gives us a story to get the SIG grant for another three years. And it also helps us, you know, leverage other grant funding and insurance. So again, it's not, it's sustainable. It's not going to be a drag on our, 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 you know, budget or anything like that, but we then have a, someone available. Uh, you also had a letter from uh, the town manager and uh, uh, Athol or Orange? Yes. So Sean sent that letter out, and if you note, in the email he sent, there's a link to 
get a little bit more information. He's writing about the Joint Committee's hearings on cannabis control and marijuana establishment changes that are that are in the offing. And following the email is a letter that was sent to the members of the committee outlining some of the issues that Athol thinks needs to be addressed. And so I would invite you to read it more thoroughly. Um, it He t- actually testified at the virtual hearing. And one of the things that it could have an effect on is, so it, these changes could have an effect in a way that might eliminate or restrict any community impact fees, create a mandatory annual report it, within that community impact um, structure would allow the industry to have any use of the impact fee audited. And there's other issues that are that have come up as part of these considered changes. Um, and I so mean, the bill's available through the link and I can forward you the email yep. to him from him <laughs> if you would like, but I printed it into the packet because I think it makes sense to consider the kinds of changes that could affect Deerfield's ability to manage this because those host community agreements that include the community impact fees are designed to help the towns mitigate the circumstances of recreational use of marijuana. And personally, this is another one of those things where I think we need to make our our position known in a considered way because it could have an impact on us. And, And by us, I mean, the town. Here's what the state's been trying. The town. Here's what the state's been trying to do ever since this came into effect: is to take the, the town, the small town, who has shouldered all the liability, all the all the expense and lawyers' fees for a measly two and a half to three percent. Meanwhile, and they'd like to take that and make that disappear. Meanwhile, keep their twenty percent. I mean, it's just a, it's atrocious how the state has handled this whole rollout of marijuana. They have stuck our small towns with all the lawyers fees, all the running around because they didn't know what they're doing and we didn't know what we were doing. And so we all had to figure it out together and we worked, I don't know how many hours to craft just in our town alone, two host to community agreements, which we've seen zero dollars from in the last four years. And, and now that maybe uh, we might be getting close possibly to something opening up, they want to then stop any of this money coming to the town of Deerfield. But, but all and the so meanwhile, why I gave 20% for them. I mean, I, I just, it's, it's atrocious. I'm just so sick so about my, this. So my question is, is, do you want to draft a letter yes. that sends a strong yes. statement like yes. Sean did? Yes, yeah. I do. I do. And we need to send it to Joe and Natalie both. Correct. Because this is so crazy. I, I, I mean, I am, I'm agreement. With Trevor, we tried to be cutting edge on this years ago. We've attended meetings. We've tried to. I remember I was at a couple of them with you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. We have been working hours and hours on this and we have yet to get a dime. And I I just, and to have them take. It needs to be predictable as well. I mean, both sides, like any contract, both sides need to have outlined expectations that we can stick to that the state doesn't step in and say oh we're going to change this because we feel it needs to happen and i don't necessarily mean to be flip about it but that's how it reads that's exactly how it reads they get pressure from the money industry that says oh we're spending too much money and yet you know meanwhile oh no problem yeah we should we should stop the small piddly amount coming to a town and all the while taking 20 percent sales tax have we seen any of that money no no and i can't i cannot imagine how much we've spent because i wasn't here for a good portion thousands and thousands of dollars and not to mention all the time and meetings and i can't even oh nothing gets me more fired up than that well so you've mentioned this to me before trevor and to your point what i the reason i wanted you to see it is because i know you feel very strongly about it this is our opportunity to send in some information it may not have any impact but certainly if we copy that letter to natalie and joe we have Mm -hmm. a much better 
ability to, to yep. get our voice heard. And okay. you know, Sean Sahowski is the town manager in Athol, but he sent this out to all the STAM members in our yep. group. And so I just Great. thought it rose to the level that you should see Thank Sean's you. letter. Yep, I'll read it. And uh, yeah, I agree. We should, and then maybe cr we could craft a similar letter for it. Yep. That'd be I, great. I don't I don't even want to say then we could. I, I want to make a motion that we should. Yes. That we should. Okay. And yep. that when you have just put it in the list, your to-do list. I'm sorry to make you do one more thing, but um I again I feel very strongly about this. We we can't we can't let this go either. I mean, honestly. Yep. You know, it's ironic because the town of Deerfield was one of the first towns in the Commonwealth. Yes. Establish a marijuana zones and stuff. Yep. You know, Dick and I went to every single in the friendly community. We drove all the way to Boston yeah. and got information on that. And we listed, went into tons of meetings and we, you know, cut and paste everything that was available to come up with our first, you know, which had some problems. But, oh. uh, you know, when we designed the marijuana zone, being ready try to be on top of this. We've got Trevor and I and, and, and Dave, we've been to meetings when you were on the board before. And honestly, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So else? I will, so did you actually want to make that motion, Carolyn, or do I you did. just I want did. to use consensus? No, I did. Okay. I made a motion. Okay. I'll second is it. there a second for it? Yeah, I'll second it. Any further discussion? No, plenty, but no. <laughs> good. You don't have to complain and whine anymore. No, we're good. Well, we can go to 9.30 if you want. No, 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 no. I, I know. Not hearing any further discussion. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor Aye, McKinney. Carolyn. <laughs> Sorry, it jumped the gun on you again. Oh, so okay. impatient. And I, David. Oh, Thank you. Right. I'm losing daylight here i did never turn on the lights in here we motion to adjourn or we got anything else uh, no we got uh, I, casey, casey and public comment oh i better go turn the lights on and i can't see no 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 Trevor, no i'm gonna worry. keep it short i think uh, anecdotally i've mentioned to the board um the amount of work in here it's we're getting close to town meeting so i've been finalizing the warrant working with brenda on the budget there's personnel tasks to take care of and MVP project follow-up that's in in process, plus other types of just daily and weekly work that I do on a regular basis. But there's other projects that are starting to come across the desk and they're related to building things and you know just solving problems that come up on a regular basis. But one of the, the things that impacts my ability to finish projects is when those things come up and it becomes a house on fire that has to get solved, sometimes that takes more time than I would like. So what I did do over the weekend was I came in and worked, did a, a fair amount of work on the classification report that I provided yesterday during the meeting. And so I've been asked by finance to provide more information and there needs to be some further discussion. So that's going to take up a little bit of time, which means some things that might be an expectation are going to get pushed to the side because that's the only thing I can do at this point. We and need so to take some time off. I, I think everybody's not an option right now. Well, but Jennifer is taking time off. So I'm going to do my best not to send her a text. Good. <laughs> oh, when are you going when are you taking time off, Jennifer? Friday and Monday. Good. Oh, okay. I will, I will try not to text you or it's call fine. you on Friday or Monday. <laughs> it's okay. So I just wanted to no. let you know that we'll, she'll be out of the office. Good. And so there are some other things that need follow-up. We're, we had a bit of a struggle with the senior center tent, but I think it's in a stable orbit now. Stable. I've had a couple conversations with building commissioner, but we also need to be sure that everything's in line and that we understand what the expectations are if there's additional work that needs to be done. And so I make a comment about myself ending up putting out fires here and there, but every other department head is in the midst of that same type of workflow. And so if there are things that are asks that come across any of our cell phones usually, um, I'm just asking that people check in first so that we can see whether we can fit it into a workflow. 
because it really is, we're trying to catch up on minutes. I've got one staff person working on that, but that also requires review, which means I have to sit down and look at it. And I found, you would have had three sets of minutes, Carolyn, but I found a couple things that I needed corrections on. So, which requires you to go back and listen. So um, it's, not an, it's not an insubstantial fine. thing to do minutes. I feel for everybody that does minutes. <laughs> Casey, but I, I have to do them I, too because I have to look at them at the end. I, I, I was reading the March 12th. I just, so I just didn't know if that was that was what we had, you know, before. So I'm, I'm sorry. So what I mean, we're doing is we've got two people yeah. working on it. I, I didn't mean it as a criticism. No, no, no. It's, it's just, just, it just takes it time. Included. I thought it was included in our group. No, there was one that I had to, like I said, I needed some clarification on a couple of things because my notes didn't match. And so when everybody hears me typing, it's because I do take notes for myself so I can go back and refer to the questions that you want me to send to council. Um, so for purposes of what's getting done is we're really in the home stretch to push to town meeting. We have the information session next Wednesday, finance and the select board have a meeting on Tuesday. What's on Monday, Jennifer? There's so, oh, if we have a South County Senior Center Board of Oversight um, if Jonathan asks me to go to it to explain something, I'm going to have to do that too. Um, and then there's a couple of questions I have for council in addition to what we discussed. So I'll be forwarding that information and coordinating with the moderator council. Jennifer, Adam, Brian Ravish, they're all handling the setup for town meeting and working through that. And I thank them for all their hard work because it's something of a bear, mm -hmm. especially with outside town meeting. And so the reason we're having that information session is so that we can prepare residents in some fashion to be able to sit down and go through the warrant articles. And so the issue for next week is finalizing the budget and being able to take that information and plop it into a presentation. That's the reason I'm cautioning everybody to understand we may not right. have a finalized presentation on Monday afternoon because we do have some votes that have to be addressed on Tuesday. Yep. And your report okay. has been sent out to be printed. So, okay, great. Yeah, a lot of hard work on a lot of people's part. Yeah, and we appreciate all the hard work that the people writing the reports did. There's a lot of editing that goes into it, and yeah. Pat and Brenda do a huge chunk of that work. Brenda's one of our best proofreaders in here, and Jennifer and Pat have been coordinating getting that stuff. You know, some of the nuances of the report itself, some of that the final tweaks done. And I appreciate them both focusing on that. And that's really what I have to say right now. Have Just keep time? an eye on your email. Yeah. <laughs> I make a motion we adjourn. Uh, no, sure. public comment, public comment. Oh, oh, public comment, I'm sorry. Yeah. I see Chris Harris is on the line. No, I have no comment. Thanks for everything everyone's doing. Thanks I know for it's joining, busy. Chris. Thanks for joining. You bet. I'm I'm always so happy to have you have people participate. Thank you, Chris, for always coming. So, motion to adjourn now. Wait, Casey, you had your hand raised. One last thing, or nope. I did. Nope. I just nope. realized in one of those sets of minutes, Rocky's last name is it Foley? Foley. 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 Thank you. I'll fix that in the, All right. uh, that's a Scrivener's error. I will fix that in the no, minute. I saw that. I, I forgot to mention it when we went and approved them. F-O-L-E-Y. Yep. So. Nobody wants yeah. a second. Car so Carolyn's muted, so. I, oh, no, I, I'm ready to second it. If, All if, right. If we got a motion. We got a second. Uh, any discussion? <laughs> sure. Good. Let's turn on the lights. <laughs> I can't see anything in here. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Good night, everybody. Thank Have you. All right. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you.